In this video, I'm going to take you through how UA audio interfaces like Apollo and Aero work with Apple's Logic Pro X on a Mac computer. I'm using an Aero to demonstrate, but the concepts apply to all desktop and rack mount Apollos as well. Before we begin, be sure you've installed the UAD software and firmware updates and registered your interface at uaudio.com so you're ready to follow along. Apollo and Aero let you hear yourself complete with onboard UAD effects in real time, all the time, with no latency, because it's all done in the interface, not on the host computer. And the keys to this true low latency recording and monitoring system are onboard UAD2 processing and the console application. Console runs alongside Logic and handles all your audio monitoring. It lets you set up your inputs and headphone mixes easily. And you can record yourself through UAD emulations of vintage mic preamps, compressors, EQs, reverbs, or guitar amps with no latency, just like if you were using an analog studio. Console replaces the software monitoring feature in Logic, so be sure to disable the software monitoring preference when using an Aero or Apollo. In Console, all physical and virtual inputs are shown as channel strips. Channel strips are routed directly to the monitor output so you hear sound as soon as you plug in an input. You use consoles, faders, and other controls to create your input mix, but the audio recorded in Logic is sent at full level before the faders. With Universal Audio Interfaces, onboard DSPs run the mixer and UAD plugins. Interfaces come complete with a basic set of great sounding plugins right in the box, which include the 610B tube preamp, the LA-2A and 1176 compressors, and the Marshall Plexi Classic Guitar Amp. You track through them with no latency by adding them to channel strips in the console. You can choose to record with or without effects by toggling the Insert Effects buttons. When set to record, effects will be recorded. And when set to monitor, you'll hear the effects, but they won't be recorded. You can set this up channel by channel or all at once using the global Insert Effects buttons on the side panel. And when you're ready to mix, you can use the same UAD plugins directly in Logic. Just be sure to disable anything you're not using in console to get the most out of your DSP. Unison preamps like the 610B and the Marshall are placed in a special insert slot at the top of the channel. They can be used in any channel insert, but when you use the special Unison slot, they take over the physical preamps to complete the hardware model by changing the impedance and gain staging. And because of this unique hardware-software interaction, Unison preamps are always recorded, regardless of the state of the Insert Effects buttons. The Settings page is where you edit and save hardware and software options. The default settings are a great starting point, but you can customize them at any time, and you may want to set Input Delay Compensation to Off for the lowest latency. Logic uses Core Audio for communicating with audio interfaces, and Console's unique I.O. matrix allows you to customize the driver for your Apollo or Aero. Start by setting it to Default. Default lists all of the inputs and outputs on the interface, which you can then reorder to suit your needs. When you're done, you can store them as a preset. Note that when working at high sample rates, the I.O. configuration changes, and some channels are disabled. Be sure to refer to the software manual for a complete list of driver tables. There are a few basic ways to set up your headphone mixes. The simplest way is to set the cue source to mix. Then everything you hear in the speakers is routed to the built-in headphone outputs, and you control the overall volume with the dedicated knobs on your interface. You can also create discrete headphone mixes using console sends for your live audio tracks and logic sends for individual DAW tracks. You do this by setting the Q source to HP or Q and using console headphone sends and logic sends routed to the headphone outputs to create your mix. Now launch logic, and after the audio unit scan is complete, we need to load the driver for your interface. Open the audio preferences window and in the Devices tab, select Universal Audio Thunderbolt for both input and output device, and then click Apply Changes. With Apollo and Aero, your DAW buffer size doesn't really matter because the hardware handles all real-time audio processing and monitoring without relying on the host computer. 
The hardware buffer size determines how much latency occurs when looping audio through logic. If you want to play virtual instruments inside logic, set the hardware buffer to a low setting, like 64 or 32 samples. Low buffers use more of the computer's power to minimize latency, but it makes instruments easier to play. Of course, this does reduce track count. For mixing, you can set the hardware buffer high so that the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. You'll have to experiment to find the best settings for your computer and your workflow, but a good starting point here is 128 samples. Logic also has a separate buffer for plug-in processing called Processor Buffer Range, which also affects latency. For the lowest latency with plugins running inside Logic, use the small setting, but be aware that it uses more processing power. For mixing, you can set it to medium or large. In Logic, inputs and outputs are shown as numbered lists by default, but it's easy to use the names provided by your interface's driver. Go to the Mix menu and choose I.O. Labels. Click on the Provided by Driver radio button for the first input, then scroll to the last input and shift-click on its radio button to change them all at once. Now you'll see the names of the inputs alongside the I.O. number, which is really helpful. Logic automatically renames the main monitor left-right outputs to Stereo Output, and it automatically sets it to the user name selection. New tracks are set to Stereo Out by default, but you can easily bust the signal to any of Apollo's line outputs or directly to the headphone outputs. When you monitor your audio through Logic, you'll encounter latency due to buffering, which is usually not a great recording experience. Apollo and Aero let you avoid that input latency altogether by replacing Logic's software monitor with live audio direct from the interface, controlled by the console application. To disable software monitoring in Logic, go to Preferences and open the General tab and uncheck Software Monitoring. Logic also features low latency mode, which disables certain plugins during recording. This can be useful in some instances where high latencies are problematic, but it automatically disables some plugins, so use this setting with care. Logic automatically sends the session sample rate to the internal clock. When you're not using Logic, you can change the sample rate for core audio applications like iTunes with the pop-up menu at the bottom of the mixer window or in hardware settings. Apollo and Aero have a number of virtual channels, which are connections that let you route the audio from applications on your computer to channel strips in the console, and vice versa. For example, you can route Logic's main output to a pair of virtual channels instead of the main monitor. This makes it easier to blend live sources with DAW playback right in the console using faders. To do this, open Audio Preferences and go to the I.O. Assignments tab and map the stereo output of Mon left and right to Virtual 1 and 2. In Console, link Virtual 1 and 2 to create a stereo fader and then give it a custom name. In addition to making it easier to mix your live inputs with DAW playback, you get two great headphone mix options for free when you route Logic's output to virtual channels. You can set the Q source to mix and use the main console mix, that's easy. Or you can set the Q source to HP or Q and use channel strip sends to create a separate mix for the headphones. To route system sounds and computer audio to virtual channels, launch the Audio MIDI Setup application and view the Audio Devices window. Click on Output to see the channel names for all available outputs. You'll see the virtual channels are called out by name. Next, click Configure Speakers and set the left and right speakers to the virtual channels you want to use. Click Apply and Done to commit the changes. Your computer audio now plays through channel strips and you can even add UAD plugins to make it sound great. You'll find more information and current software at help.uaudio.com.